Hello. Hi. Hello. Everybody. Hello. Hello. Oh. All right, so we're here with uh, Forsaken Throne. It's a new, uh, it's a new D and D thing we're gonna do. I will let From our lovely Pathfinder, Pathfinder piece. Yeah, you know. Um, I'm gonna let our lovely DM explain. Yes, with the ending of Throne of Night, I decided to take up the mantle of DMing. What? <laughs> yeah. Core oh, blimey! You're a what? <laughs> <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, welcome DM to my destiny. new campaign, Forsaken Throne, which takes place in one of the largest cities on cities, not the largest, but one of the largest in Galorian, um, my own my own main city of Emerizia, which is ruled by which is ruled to which is ruled under the, the total control of Empress Eroda Arkland. You will see it when we actually start playing the game. Yes. At some point. The map is quite big. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I have the void screen. What the fuck? <laughs> so anyway, in front of us, though, on the void specifically, we have um, many. We have the tokens of our various players. So each player, why don't you describe who you are and you know a bit about you? Let's go we'll start. Left. We'll start from the left, Jake. Great. Okay. Well, starting off, I'm Jake, and I'm very tired, but. That's not what this is about. We dragged him to uh, a court. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, my character is um, Balad Volsamar, and he's uh, an ex-city guard guy. And he gets very mad sometimes, and you don't want to be near him when that happens. Um, but you'll see that in the future anyway. And uh, he's got some special qualities um, that I will not divulge for now, but they'll be very obvious. So, yeah. What what class he's is he? He's very friendly. He's a blood rager. Mm. A new class, as in the recently released uh, advanced class guide by Paizo Entertainment. Yeah, uh, and when we say recently released, as in last week. That yep, is, as true. of the recording of this video. If you yeah. watch this three years in the future. It will be three years and one week from then. Yeah, that is true. So everyone knows it was released in the week of the eleventh of August, twenty fourteen. <laughs> AD. AD. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> not, not <laughs> <time> <laughs> Gregorian <laughs> calendar. Yeah, Gregorian calendar. Yes. <laughs> All right. Do continue, that. Yake. Yeah. Um. I. I'm good. Okay. What, what does your character do for a living? Oh yeah, he's a guard. He's not like a city guard. He was, but no longer. Where Freelance guard? now. Now he's like a freelance guard. Uh, okay. People hire him on. Where does he reside? He resides in. Don't remember the north side. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. You have, a, you, have, you have a. I don't remember your exact. I don't remember exactly which kind of either low quality or medium quality house in Northside. Yes. It is kind of in the southeast middle-ish area of the district. Okay. That south could have I say southwest a number of houses, correct. but it's in there. Alright. More southwest than southeast, but oh well. Is it? Okay. Shifts, no, so shifting, a, shifting away from our Blood Rager, player two. Player two? Alright. Yeah, it's Malachi, and uh, I will be playing Laurel Arkenbrack, an alchemist and entrepreneur in his own little alchemy shop, uh, which he has on the just by the by the Muleback Crossing. Uh, he lives there in his shop, um, again still in Northside, with his uh, little brother, uh, simple little simple little brother, and his uh, his mother, who uh, in young age worked so hard that she can no longer walk. As such, uh, he has a very pressing uh, concern, which is, of course, money to feed the family and keep the shop open, uh, which will drive him to all lengths, all sorts of, of different places, I'm sure. Um, he has a good heart, and in general, he wants to see himself and his surroundings prosper. Uh, he wants to, to pull himself out of the, basically, the, the slums and the poverty-stricken areas by doing good hard work um, and really non-questionable things, uh, although if driven to the line of poverty, uh, who knows what might happen. Um, 
His line of work is generally alchemy. He, uh, he produces acid, alchemist fires, healing salve, really, really anything alchemical uh, he can make. Um, and he's uh, prepared to use that uh, to his advantage in every situation he can. Yeah. Very well. I think that covered all the points. I'm, I'm happy with that. So on to player three. Fine. This is Silly White. She is um, a bastard of uh, a noble man. <laughs> She's a bastard. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, but, um, of a noble man that is a banker. Um, her stepmom wanted her out of the way, uh, so she wouldn't be the heir. Uh, so her father, still loving her, bought her a house that is uh, pretty good a big house uh, that lives in the poor district though <laughs> but uh, she's fine with it uh, she is uh, a life oracle um, she works at uh, the hospital and the soup kitchen where she also eats at the soup kitchen because she doesn't have much money um, she is, what's it called, not blind, but she is... You, you have clouded vision. I have clouded vision. Sounds like I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Anyway, um... You're an oracle, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> Everyone. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> My vision is clouded. Um... She's going to, like, uh, outfox the soothsayer in the party. <laughs> with mysterious proclamations. Oh, uh, it's not a soothsayer, it's a gambler. No, oh, sure. That's what, that's what it says. <laughs> Which is actually soothsaying. <laughs> we'll get to anyway. that later, anyway. Um, um, what does your character want from their life? She... Or does she not really have a goal in mind? She, her goal in mind is actually to be able to live with her father, but not with her stepmom, because her stepmom is a really, really nasty lady. Um, I'm not sure if, if I sh if I should go all character history here or not. Uh, we, we can save that. You, yeah, you can I, think, I think it's better to save it so so there is some yeah. some mystery. Yeah. yeah, some mystery. Let's have some mystery to it. Um, yeah. Very well. That, that's pretty much it. Player, player four, please also give your entire character name. Yes, yes well, this is, this is Rahal, of course. And I will be playing Rafael Eduardo Dante Arturo Enrique de Firenze, which is a... He is a swashbuckler, one of the new classes released in the advanced class guide uh, from the same place Jake got his, um, his Blood Rager. So, Rafael, to his friends, uh, he is quite the rakish rogue, uh, he is uh, basically a character that will be like a, a mix of uh, of the Dread Pirate Roberts and Sirio Forel. Um, he um, is very much all about the, the style and the finesse and the, the glorious awesomeness that is his own fencing technique. And he is in relentless pursuit of perfecting it. Uh, he does not, he's not born in the city. He, uh, he came here uh, fairly recently, um, rumor has it that you know he is from a colony uh, far away that got uh, hit with bandit raids, and supposedly no one survived. You know, yet here he is, um, and you know he has he has traveled the seas and has now come to come to the city to basically try to make himself a name. Uh, he is very much all about testing himself uh, and his own fencing abilities which he has quite the, um, the, the, the he is very proud of his abilities and he is very uh, sure in them that he can with them fight uh, almost any foe and he is here to basically try to prove his worth currently he resides in the Lucky Badger Tavern uh, on Mulebag Crossing in Northside, the uh, rougher part of town uh, he has basically installed himself there, uh, trying to woo the local ladies, swing on chandeliers, and help out in the bar when, when some of the customers get a bit too rough. He has scraped together a decent amount of money uh, doing this, and he's currently 
living there uh, at a reduced rate as a favor uh, from the barkeep uh, Farley, um, Brendan Farley, uh, who he helped break out a rather nasty uh, and brutal fight uh, a couple of weeks ago when the old bouncer got killed. Uh, so, yeah, Raphael, he... Um, He's a rogue and rake, but he certainly has a heart of gold. Uh, he he he's very much into helping those, uh, you know, the the helpless or or the common people. Uh, he sees himself as he sees himself definitely as a hero, uh, or like a you know a, a, def- a defender of uh, what is good and right, and a, and a wooer of women. Um, and again, yeah, if you need someone to swing on a chandelier, Raphael is the one you call because he will he will bloody well do it. Um, yeah, sports poker class. Uh, I haven't really is the first time I look at it, of course, because the book came out like last week. So it's going to be interesting to see how he performs. Um, I'm, I'm, I have high hopes for the sports poker and Raphael in particular, because uh, yeah, I think it's going to be great. And with that, I leave it to our completely complete Pathfinder uh, newbie. What would you write? Yeah. Player five, reveal yourself. <laughs> Uh, right, so I'm playing a woman because I played a uh, an angry dwarf in the D and D fourth edition. So I'm changing it up. Uh, her name's Rifflind, and she is a sorceress going old school with the Pathfinder shit. Um, and with her is her familiar Nairu, which is a hawk, and he's break dancing. What? What? Okay. Um. Yeah, basically she uh, lived in a small village, um, bad stuff happened, she found her powers, uh, she had to live off the land on her own for about a decade, and um, uh, found her way to the city in which she now lives. Uh, she was a fortune teller, made her uh, life as a soothsayer, where she resides across the street from the Lucky Badger tavern um so she's quite close to everybody she has a lovely neighbor she loves um and is kind of confused by and she has a couple uh could say guardians in the city uh she's new to the city only been there probably a year or two uh, and she's made herself her own money she's started from nothing. That's pretty much it. Um, she has a thing for magic, being a sorceress. Um, and Nairu does not like Raphael. Just want to put that out there. What? Bad, bad experiences in the tavern? His third person oh, talking, really? Nairu hates it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Ah, Raphael is wounded by the lady's ire. Well, <laughs> and, and Nairu's like badass. He's got like sixteen AC, you know. So, ah. <laughs> strong bird, He's strong bird. bird. But yes, this is our group, and they're all living in the slum district of Northside, mm. or at least residing there in um, the Swashbuckler's case. Yeah. Yes. Well, currently the entire district is under quarantine after a. Rather unusual plague has broken loose, causing the causing the sixth body to shower similar to zombies, while not quite being undead. It's made it's been quite worrying, and a lot of people have begun to pack together into certain locations, refugee camps, emergency centres. The town hall, in particular, has received a lot of traffic. Hmm. And as it stands, all of you, in some way, have been brought. You know, you've, you've been hired, maybe you already worked there. Maybe you're doing research or doing deliveries for them. Either way, Mother Eleanor, who is definitely you know, more or less pretty much, you know, one of, one, of the, one of the best healers inside the district, has, has basically in some way recruited all of you to help her in, you know, defending, her, defending the pact of people that have come together. And that is oh. where our adventure will begin. Mm-hmm. Um, should probably say the times. I can't remember what times it is. Uh, we um, we plan, yeah, we plan playing on Saturdays. Uh, it will be recorded and be up on the channel as usual. 
uh, in, in its own playlist. <clears throat> um, we will also try to stream it. Uh, we're kind of working on, on a solution there. Uh, Sheep is not joining us for this one because he had other things to do. Uh, so he he usually streams way of the wicked. So we're trying to basically get it up and running uh, despite that. Uh, so hopefully that will be a thing. Um, and you know you can you can look below in the uh, in the description for uh, hopefully the the presumed channel we're going to use for streaming. Yeah. Uh, might not be the first uh, the first episode because you know we need we have a few things to to work out. But uh, at least by the second episode we we should have a solution for a streaming problem. Hopefully, yeah. So, uh, but for Europe, it'll be evenings. Uh, for America, it'll be what early morning? No, like two, like two two p.m. Two p.m. Eastern, one p.m. Central, and eleven Pacific. This is why we keep the American around. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Jake. And for uh, the Europeans, it is 8 p.m. CEST. Just so you know, I left out Mountain Time because screw Mountain Time. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! There's mountain Time. Well, well, that, that, that's yeah, Jake's opinion. You, you know, now, now you're gonna contrary. get the comments that you don't yeah. like America. <laughs> <laughs> don't. We're gonna get contrary the to popular belief. There's actually four time zones in the USA. You know, if you're 16 you know, stone off the ground of a half foot, <laughs> you know, two half pounds and one florin is equal to. Place in your comments if you know any guys are talking about. Divided by a center of seven log. <laughs> <laughs> then you oh, have the map. And you. again, one of these intros has gone off the rails. Yes. Hooray! So for the players, before the intro is cut, then, is there anything in particular you wish for me to. You tell our viewers, or anything you want. You want me to, you know, say out, say out to everyone. The plan is that it will be an urban campaign, right? Yeah. Yes, it is going to be primarily so, centered around the metropolis of Emeresia. Uh, some of the out, some of the outlying lands may also be used, and mm -hmm. but the, you know, the primary focus will be surrounding the city in some yeah. way. Yeah. Which is interesting. We have uh, we've had uh, um, we've had a whole country. Uh, we have had like a continent. We, it's it's quite common that adventures sort of take place over a fairly large geographical area. This time we're trying to something a little bit different, a smaller geographical area, but we're going more in depth, hopefully, yes. uh, with more characters and like uh, every street and every shop is someone we know and you know something too. And every uh, action <laughs> will have a reaction because unlike normally you can't just go to the next town and forget about it all. People yeah. will every action you do will be remembered by someone in the town. They will remember when Manika's alchemist threw that bomb and missed and it flew into the orphanage. Yeah, they will remember, remember and this. Oh, God. They will remember. And and every decision, one of the important things to remember, every decision you guys make that affects another person will be remembered throughout the entire campaign and will affect, affect every, different actions depending on the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I you will remember it. everything. I, I, is it going to be like... I'll uh, get away with something. Telltale's uh, <laughs> game... That there's oh, a message, he will yeah. remember this. Oh, yeah. 100 persons will remember this. Yes, yes that little message up there, except the DM won't be telling you he'll remember this. <laughs> no, ah, it'll be assumed. Raphael is not scared. His reputation is his honor and his shield. So I got a wooden right. shield instead. Um, uh, Dark, don't <laughs> listen to this part. Guys, our plan is to befuddle his mind with so many conflicting actions that he forgets the minor crimes we commit. <laughs> Right? We obs obscure and wow. pair obscures, eh? We, 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 and by minor I crimes, I mean mass murder and destruction and of pizza public to property. The DM game no, 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 no. <laughs> um, so he can't uh, hurt people. So he doesn't need. No, just keep us allowed. healed and we will yeah, go into the just murder Just heal stuff. us while we destroy public property and commit mass murder. <laughs> See? Uh, now so all your life has changed to evil. Bah. It doesn't really matter if I hit you guys with bombs, because you can be healed, right? Standing the well, I'm going to be standing behind you, so... Oh, we need to cut this Gans quickly. Hit the too. paladins yes. in the face, I'll roll all sixes and all twenties and get right. 72 damage. Right. Episode is over! <laughs> <Intro's> <laughs> over. Stop it.